Welcome one and all to the first of many uh, monthly Hadley Tech It Out discussion groups. Uh, my name is Ricky Inger and I am a learning expert in assistive technology at Hadley. I'll be hosting this month's meeting and perhaps uh, meetings in the future as well. You may hear other voices aside from my own, but for this evening, uh, I will be hosting and kind of the the purpose of these discussions is to choose a topic that is of interest to us as blind and visually impaired people and just take some time to explore that topic, uh, share some information that some may not be aware of, and after that, to really open it up for discussion so that we can all learn from each other. This is a community. We want to give you guys the opportunity to come together. We want to learn from you and give you the opportunity to learn from us and each other. Uh, so this first topic, we wanted to choose something that kind of had universal appeal, right? So you're probably not ever going to hear somebody say, yeah, food, I could live with it. I can live without it, whatever. I, you know, take it or leave it. I don't care. No, that's uh, probably not going to happen. We all need food, but getting that food can sometimes be a challenge, especially as blind and low vision people. I think we can all relate to trying to do this in various ways and facing some of these challenges, like walking into a store and asking for assistance and you get this, you know, the sigh and they have to turn to their colleagues and like, you help her. No, you help her. And you're kind of made to feel like uh, a burden instead of a paying customer. Or maybe we face the challenge of working with a friend or a family member to assist us in grocery shopping. And that gets a little bit interesting as well, because sometimes you may be waiting three or four days for somebody's schedule to free up before they can take you, or you're having to decide now, how do I repay this person in some way uh, for, you know, what they're doing for me in helping me to grocery shop. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just do this independently, choose my own stuff and have it delivered to me? So thankfully the answer is yes, because of technology, this is becoming more and more possible every day. I'd like to first start out talking about uh, grocery delivery and a bit later, we'll get into food delivery services. So I'm going to just speak in general about how uh, grocery delivery services work. Then I'll talk about a couple that I personally have used. And then I want to open it up for questions and comments and suggestions from all of you, or even just uh, concerns that you have about using some of these services or what have you and uh, have that dialogue. Once that's done, we'll talk a little bit about uh, restaurant delivery services and various other kinds of uh, delivery services that might be available. So let's just first start out then with grocery delivery services. Now, how do these things work? Well, in general, um, you have either a local chain, for example, uh, Harris Teeter is a chain that's here in the Southeast. And this chain itself may decide to offer grocery delivery services. So it's not necessarily contracting with a third party. Uh, they're just doing this on their own. The second option is a service who chooses to partner with existing grocery stores and sort of act as a front end or a middleman, however you want to look at it, and offer the ability for you to shop at multiple stores in your area. These are services like Instacart um, and Shipt and a couple of others that we'll talk about. And the way these work is that each store in a particular area who wants to partner with the service will do so and uh, basically provide 
provide what is stocked on their shelves. And uh, you can take a look at that. So let's say that you are in an area and you're looking at a grocery delivery service. I'm going to use uh, Instacart as an example. You'll start out by uh, entering in your uh, zip code. And that will basically tell the service, okay, this is where you are. So now I can tell you what services are available to you. Once you've done that, you can sign up and now you're ready for the fun part, right? To get shopping. So you can do this in one of two ways. You can search for a specific item or you can do one of my favorite things that I spend probably way too much time doing. And that is uh, selecting the browse option. So, with this option, you can, for example, select deli. And then you can look at the subcategories under deli and maybe select specialty cheeses. And once that's done, maybe select soft cheeses and just keep narrowing it down until you're able to look at all the soft cheeses that this grocery store has to offer. And to me, this is one of the most empowering abilities that online shopping has brought to me because before I only knew what was on the shelf if someone else mentioned it. You know, they might see it in passing or maybe that was their favorite cereal so they let me know it was there. Maybe I saw it on a commercial or I heard somebody else talk about it. Um, these were the ways that I could uh, get an idea of what was available. With the ability to browse, now I'm not depending on someone else for letting me know what's there or what's not there and kind of using their own filters to say, well, you wouldn't care about this. No, I can see all this information along with the price of the item so I can make smart budgetary choices. I can see how big the boxes, for example. And in a lot of cases, I can also see uh, ingredients, nutritional information. Uh, how do you prepare this thing? And those were things that were not always accessible, or if they were, I would have to use a different option like a barcode scanner or uh, looking it up online somewhere to find out that information. So having this at my fingertips is really, really cool. Uh, so that is, in general, how these uh, grocery delivery services work. So let's talk about Instacart specifically. Um, this is a service that partners with uh, the grocery stores that are in your area, and it will do a couple of different things. Sometimes the store will say, same as in-store prices. And you know then that whatever price you're paying here is the same price that you would pay in-store. Now, some of them don't have that kind of partnership with the store. And so you may be actually paying a little more for the items than you would be if you were able to make it to the store and get them on your own. Then, of course, it's always the uh, situation of, well, uh, do I want to spend the $20 in an Uber to go get this thing? Or do I want to pay a little extra and still probably come out cheaper um, to go ahead and get this delivered from the store, even though I'm technically paying a higher price than I would be, uh, you know, standing in the checkout line. So these are the things that you kind of learn to think about. For, you kind of have to wonder, how, how does Instacart make their money? Well, they can make it on delivery fees, uh, service fees, and uh, the ability for you to subscribe to something called Instacart Express. So with Instacart, you can either choose to pay the delivery fee that is quoted to you, or you can say, you know what, I'm probably going to be ordering more than twice a month. So if I become a member of Instacart or if I pay for Instacart Express, I've paid this one flat fee 
And now all my deliveries are going to be, quote, free for the rest of the year. They're not entirely free because you've paid as part of your member pricing, but you don't have to worry each time you place an order that now you have a delivery fee on top of that. Uh, so that is very quickly how Instacart works. And there's a great deal that I'll be happy to answer about Instacart. I want to mention two more grocery services and then open it up for you guys to ask questions. The second one that I use not quite as often as Instacart, but I still really like it, is called Shipt. S-H-I-P-T. Just as with Instacart, it has both an app and a website. Now, with Instacart, I have found that it is actually a more pleasant experience for me to use the mobile app rather than the website. With Shipt, the opposite is true. So I much prefer using the website to the mobile app. Both of them are usable, sometimes with a little bit of tweaking, but... Uh, again, when you have multiple platforms available, sometimes a task makes a little more sense on one platform and sometimes it works better on another. Shipt is very similar to Instacart in that there are a group of stores uh, that they will partner with and uh, you will either get in-store pricing or higher than uh, in-store pricing with the exception of Target, because apparently Target has just bought shipped earlier this year. And so now, whenever you want to stock up on your Target stuff, shipped is definitely a nice way to do that. Uh, because they do have the same prices as you see in store. Uh, last, I want to mention Amazon. So I don't know if you guys remember, some of you probably do, but the tagline for Amazon, especially in the beginning, was the everything store. And that has never been more true than now. I swear that you truly can get everything at Amazon. Um, there are actually multiple methods of getting things from Amazon. All of them do depend on your having a prime membership. So, uh, if you're ever wondering, is this Prime membership thing worth it at all? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. You can order uh, from a thing called Prime Now, which is available in many areas, but not all areas. Uh, that works such that you can uh, search the Amazon store and get things delivered in as little as two hours. Uh, in some places. Since Amazon has purchased Whole Foods, you can actually order foods from Whole Foods through Amazon Prime now and have those at your door within under two hours. Um, for some people, Prime now is not available, but Prime Pantry is. And what Prime Pantry is, is a way that you can stock up on a uh, just like what it sounds like, pantry goods, so dry goods, pastas, canned goods, uh, even things like laundry detergent, soaps, shampoos, and the like. And you pay a flat $5.99 fee for a big box. And when I say a big box, I mean like it can hold 45 pounds. And you don't have to fill up your box, but if you want to, you know, fully get the bang for your buck, it's a good idea if you do. Um, and again, $5.99 flat fee to get some of these dry goods and canned goods and just household items. And so for those of you who may live in a more rural area that doesn't have Instacart or Shipt, because unfortunately, uh, these services are still growing and they aren't everywhere. I was looking this morning and I saw that the town I grew up in, which was about 25,000 people, does not have either of these services shipped or uh, Instacart. But you can still do uh, Amazon Prime Pantry in these areas. Whereas a place that uh, I later moved to, which has a population of about 120,000, 
they did have Instacart. And so if you're sitting there and thinking to yourself, wow, I live in the middle of nowhere, I'm never going to get this, don't lose hope because some of these services may eventually come to you. And for those that don't, there are still options like uh, the, the prime pantry and so on. Um, so it's truly wonderful to see that so many things are available to all of us. And I've really just touched on the tip of the iceberg because I don't want to be the only one speaking all evening. So I'm going to uh, open it up now for questions. And what I'd like to ask you guys to do is, again, I'm not going to unmute everyone because uh, I don't want there to be a big stampede and uh, everyone speaking at once with a lot of background noise. But if you do have something that you would like to say, uh, please either press star six on your phone or uh, alt A to unmute yourself in your software or find that on your app. And again, state your name uh, before you speak, please, so that we all know uh, who's asking a question. Who's first? Um. Uh, this is Impish in Atlanta. Um, I wanted to say I use um, Instacart and also Walmart grocery. And um, I don't know if everyone's aware of this or not. I just found this out about Instacart. Uh, I find, just like you said, Ricky, the website to be quite cumbersome, and the mobile app is okay, but I find it also to be a little tricky, but they have a toll-free 1-800 number that you can call if you have a disability, and they will actually do the shopping for you. So that's what I do now with Instacart. I just call them, and I tell them what I want. They put it in my cart and they check out for me and they, um, you know, go through the process. So I don't have to deal with the website. I don't have to deal with the mobile app. They just do it all for me. I just tell them what I want. So um, I, I can email you the toll free number. You can share it or you can call Instacart and they can transfer you over to that separate department. But that might be an option for people who may not want to deal with the technology or, or don't want to, or feel frustrated with it. Um, and then Walmart grocery, I don't know if people are, are um, in the area for that, but I use Walmart grocery. It's a pickup service versus a delivery, but it's a, it's a really useful service as well too. So I just wanted to share that. That is awesome. I had no idea that Instacart, would perform that service and that is truly useful because I think we all know that for some of us technology is something that we do every day and for some of us it's like the bane of our existence it's a necessary evil and sometimes we just don't have it we don't want to fight with the site we don't want to fight with accessibility or usability issues and still being able to do this independently to call someone and you've chosen what you want and you're just asking them to assist in getting that into the cart for you as a part of the service that you're paying for is wonderful to know. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This is Susan Card and um, I'd like that number if you get it, Ricky. Yeah, so uh, if, uh, if you are able to, uh, to, to find that during our call and if you could read it for uh, the participants, that would be wonderful. Otherwise, uh, I will certainly look that up and be happy uh, to, to send that to anyone who requests it. If you need to request that, you can send an email to enger at hadley.edu and I'll welcome your feedback and questions, thoughts about the event and if there's any resource that's mentioned here uh, that you weren't able to catch right when it happened, uh, please email me and I'll be happy to assist. Um, Jeannie Johnson, Nashville, Tennessee. Go ahead, Jeannie. Okay. Um, 
In Nashville, and I'm sure probably the other states that have it, Kroger also has um, a pickup service similar to Walmart. The um, iOS app is very easy to use now. It took some work, but some of us had called and asked them to work on different things, and they actually did it. So now it's much easier to use than the website. Um, they do deliver, and today when I went to pick up my groceries, they call it Click List, C-L-I-C-K-L-I-S-T. But when I went to pick them up, I asked if our store was going to start delivering, and they said we already do, and evidently they partner with Instacart. But if you live in a city and have a way to go to the store and pick them up, it's very easy. You set the hour that you want to pick them up, and then you go, and there's a certain area where you go to pick up the groceries. You call the number that they have posted. In fact, I just put it in my phone so that I can just tell my phone to call ClickList. And uh, in about five minutes, they bring the groceries out to you, put them in the car. Uh, they say you're not supposed to tip them, which I would rather do that, but they say no. And then you just take them home and put them in your house and put them away. So it's very convenient, too, for those of you who have Kroger. Nice. And that's a good thing to keep in mind, actually, is that in some cases you're going to live in an area where uh, the store may have online shopping, but they don't necessarily do delivery. Now, in her case, uh, they are partnering with Instacart, and they do, but in some cases they don't do <coughs> delivery, but you still can use that opportunity to shop for your groceries, select exactly what you want, and uh, you will then have to, you know, find a ride to pick them up or, again, take a rideshare service like Uber or Lyft and pay that service to pick them up and get them in your home. Because really the idea, right, is to, uh, to, to choose what you want independently. Will Buckler, Matthews, North Carolina. Okay, Will, can you hang on one second? We have, sure. um, uh, we'll get to you definitely next. And you're actually very close to me because I'm uh, very close to Matthews. Uh, in any case, we had an individual on the phone who has raised their hand. I'm not sure who that is, but if you were on the phone and you've pressed star nine because you'd like to speak, you jumped in just before Will, so we'll take you first. Um, Terry Powers from Maryland. Okay, go ahead, Terry. Um, first of all, um, do you know anything about Peapod for Giant? I know that it exists, and there are probably people here who do use it. I unfortunately don't have direct familiarity with it because it does not operate in my area. Uh, but Peapod's a great, it's actually one of the first, aside from like Schwann's, uh, who did this. Do you have a specific question about Peapod? I've never used it. I don't know how to use it, but would the um, Instacart um, like cover Giant if um, so? I could use it then, or um... what you'll want to do is uh, look at a lot of these sites that are available. So Peapod is one example. Um, Giant, I'm assuming, is a grocery store in your area that may or may not partner with Instacart or Shipped or what have you, what you'll do to find that out is to visit the website in question and go ahead, put in your zip code, and they will tell you not only who's in your area, they'll tell you that they're in your area. Uh, and once you know that, you can create an account, and doing that is absolutely free. So you'll want to go ahead and uh, create your account to be able to look at what services or what stores, rather, that service partners with so you know whether you can shop at Giant or there might be a different store in your area that you're not familiar with, but they might be just as good, and you can work at shopping with them. Now, the lady that um, deals with Walmart... Um, so, like, she puts in her order um, online then? Because, um, like, we like to shop at Walmart, but um, that would actually be handy, like, if they would, if there was a way that we could put our order in um, for the grocery portion, and then, like, like they have a craft section, so 
like right. we like to browse through the store for other things. Yes. So and then, um, so just quickly, there are two uh, options for Walmart. There's Walmart and Walmart <laughs> Grocery. And in some areas, Walmart Grocery isn't offered, and in some areas, it is. You'll want to just do some searching around uh, and look at the Walmart.com site. Or do a Google search for Walmart grocery in the name of your town, and that will tell you if that's available. And yes, you can pr uh, put in your order there with uh, Walmart grocery, just as you can with Walmart.com. All right, we're going to move on to. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, will, <coughs> you're next. Go ahead. Okay, so Ricky, I wanted to touch base on a couple of quick things um, with Instacart. My wife and I love it. Um, we use it quite a bit here, but we have noticed recently that they changed one of their policies. When it first started, there was that 10% uh, service charge that you could actually opt yes. out of. Yes. And that is gone now. You can't opt out. So whatever your order is, they're going to charge you a 10% fee on it now. I've so found if you spend $100 on groceries, they charge you an extra $10. Oh. I've actually found, though, and uh, – Take a take a look at this the next time you're checking out with Instacart. Mm -hmm. You are charged by default 10%, but there's actually a breakdown for it, okay? So 5% is uh, the service fee, and that is non-negotiable. You're absolutely right about that. And then they automatically add 5% for your driver, and that portion can be adjusted. See, on mine, on mine it says service fee is 10% and I can't change it, and then I'm allowed to alter the tip. Oh, that's really interesting because um, – and we're actually in the same area, so that's that's a very fascinating difference. Actually. So, Curiosity, what store do you use it with most? I use it most uh, with Food Lion. That's what we do. Okay, so it's definitely not that. Um, send me an email. I'm at enr okay. at hadley.com. Edu and uh, it'll be interesting to uh, to sort yeah of to figure that out yeah. and um real quick before I let everybody else talk um here locally I'm not sure if you're aware but with Walmart grocery we actually have an added bonus here we can get that delivered they have partnered with uh, Lyft and Uber oh fantastic. so we you can just go to grocery walmart dot com do your whole order like you normally would for store pickup, but then there's an alternate tab where you can click delivery and it'll charge you 10 bucks to deliver it. But in my case, that's cheaper than the Uber ride. So yes, very nice. Nice. Right. Um, it looks like uh, we've got several people with their hands raised. So we'll move through those and uh, Luis, you're on the list after that. So we're going to get to Shirley B. It's your turn. Um, I just had a comment, <clears throat> excuse me, to the person that, was from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I'm from Madison, Tennessee, which is a which is a sub which is a suburb of Nashville. And they uh, started delivering by Instacart a couple of weeks ago. So I just wanted to let that person know in case they decided they wanted to use the delivery service. Hello. Oh, you might hear me. Yes, you're audible. Can you repeat okay. that last bit, though? You broke up for me. Maybe oh, okay. Okay, I'll start over. Uh, uh, I said <clears throat> I was making a comment to the person that's also from Nashville that Instacart has started delivering uh, here in Nashville, in, in, in Madison, Tennessee, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, they use, and I'm, in, but, I'm in East Nashville, so. Okay, know. and they use, Kro they use Kroger and CVS and Publix. Okay, thank That's you. three stores. Okay. Right. Um, we have uh, several people on the phone with raised hands. So if you were on the phone and you've raised your hand, go ahead and jump in and we'll see who's first. Kim Morgan, Hi. Jacksonville, Florida. Yep, go ahead, Jacksonville. Okay. Uh, men you mentioned about being able to call Instacart. I just wanted to say that uh, Amazon has a similar uh, service. Uh, they, they call it their disability hotline, but it's a similar thing. We'll pretty much do everything for you over the phone, and you just have to talk to them. And you got to be a little careful because sometimes they hear one thing and they do another, but – uh, but but still, the, the the same type of service is available, in, so that you don't have to use the Amazon website if you don't want to. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. 
and they'll also I'm sorry they'll also help you pick out colors like I knit so if I need help picking out a color of yarn and I've never seen colors I can call them and I do know what their number is because I use it so much it's um <laughs> yeah go uh, ahead and share that if you 800 283-1678. That's for the Amazon disability line. 800-283-1678. Again, this is Jean Johnson from Nashville. Very good. Thank you, Jean. Uh, next up on the phone, who wants to jump in? We've got two of you with hands raised. Hi, this is Judy in Connecticut. Go ahead, Judy. Hi. Um, we have um, Peapod here in Connecticut, which is from Stop and Shop. And it is incredibly easy to use, both on the computer um, and on the app. It's, and I guess they got some kind of an award for being really accessible, um, you know, for blind people. So, um, you know, they're just, they're awesome. So you can do everything, you know, really pretty easily. So I just wanted to say that. That's, I think, in New England. It's for Stop and Shop. It's called Peapod. Thanks. That is great news. Absolutely. Thank you. I know that uh, Peapod is in a lot of areas. It's not in mine yet. But again, for all of these services that are mentioned, I highly encourage you guys to go and check out the websites, put in your zip code, and find out if these services are available to you. Because I think uh, you will very much enjoy the ability to do that if you haven't yet. All right. One last person exactly. on the phone, and then we've got a name. Who's next? Who's next? Zachary Horton, Warner Robins, Georgia. Okay, um, I'm curious with the Instacart, um, I'm recently blind, um, but with Instacart, is there a limit to the number of deliveries you can get if you do the Instacart Express, or is it, Not how does that, that work? Bound. So I have actually had um, multiple deliveries on the same day because I was preparing for something and uh, – one store didn't have several of the items I wanted and the other did. And so in paying for Instacart Express, um, one thing to keep in mind about Instacart in general is that it's best if you can make your order uh, over $35 or $35 or over rather. So uh, okay. if you're able to do that for each of the deliveries that you want to make, you can indeed have two shoppers uh doing deliveries and you can even do, Hey, I just made this delivery in the morning and then, wow, I realized I was out of so many other things and I hadn't looked through my pantry and I need to do another one. You can do another delivery that same day. So yes, that is definitely uh, possible and it makes things really, really convenient and a little bit dangerous because I end up spending a lot of money mm -hmm. <laughs> deciding that, right. Hey, you know, I really do need that. <laughs> so, um, Eric, you are next. Eric Barrett, you got Hello. a question? Yes, Eric, you're there in you Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, I was curious if uh, you or others could speak about uh, the quality of what you get. Uh, for example, uh, or somebody picking you like uh, spotted bananas or uh, the wrong items. How accurate are the orders, basically? That is an awesome question, and I'm surprised that it hasn't come up before now. Um, my experience has been generally very, very good. Uh, I have had instances, produce is kind of the obvious culprit. I've never had bad meat or anything scary like that, but I have gotten tiny grapes or just, you know, uh, produce that doesn't look good, kind of bendy carrots but it has happened very rarely and you do have the opportunity to rate your shopper and leave comments. And so if there's something that you're unhappy about, you can mention that item specifically, or if the shopper has uh, really kind of done a bad job overall, you can mention those things and customer service, at least with Instacart and shipped has been really, really good, uh, in my case about either refunding items if something didn't make it somehow or if I had a complaint about an item, but thankfully that does not happen very often. All right, uh, Luis, you're up. Going once. <laughs> Sorry, <coughs> I was trying to find the uh, unmute button. Um, 
two things. One was shipped, I'm not sure uh, how it is on the East Coast, but here on, on the West Coast in California. Um, yes, because you put in the zip code and the service for uh, Instacart is available, not necessarily in your neighborhood. Um, I have submitted uh, the uh, Instacart uh, account and they told me that stores relatively close to me offer delivery, but yet when I put in my a actual address, it says that unfortunately they do not deliver to my particular part of town. So you may want to keep that yeah, in mind. You're, you're absolutely right about that. And in fact, that did happen to me originally with Shipped. And what the way that it worked, at least in my case, was that I put in my zip code and they're like, yeah, we have stuff in your area. And so I signed up, which again is free. Uh, so you haven't really wasted anything except uh, perhaps a little bit of time. All right, we've got somebody who is on a portable device and you're unmuted so we can hear your speech. Uh, all right, you're silent now. Thank you. Uh, so when I did put in my address, it said, you know, well, we're not in your area yet, but you'll be the first to know because we have your email address now. And uh, they did, in fact, email me when uh, they were available. And then the other thing I wanted to uh, uh, point out, or maybe you and Will can uh, troubleshoot, is the discrepancy between both of your apps. Yes. Maybe one is a different version, so maybe... If you have automatic updates, maybe he would need to update his or, or vice versa and see if by doing that, that might be the, uh, the difference maker, different versions. Yeah, that is one possibility that we'll look at, although given that it is the same service, it's odd that they would charge different things depending on app versions, uh -huh. but we want to look at Yeah, and just I, I actually just word. updated yesterday. Gotcha. So, yeah, it's a good thought. Um, and it's one of many things that we will explore because it's, it's very, very bizarre. All right. We're back to phone wars. We have three people on the phone who have questions. Who's going to jump in first? Hi. My name is Rihanna from Jacksonville. All right. Go ahead. Um, so I was just wondering, like, how the Amazon, the accessibility hotline works. Would anyone like to speak to that, since I don't have a lot of experience with that myself? Uh, anyone who uses the Amazon Accessibility Hotline, you want to talk briefly about that? I do. I will. Okay. Um, actually, I, I have never used it for groceries, but I've used it for other items. And from my experience, I've, what I've done is I've called the phone number, and I've explain to them what I'm looking for um, and I've asked them to you know I would explain to them that I need you to describe the items to me because I can't you know um, well, can't see them they help me find a microwave actually and like questions I asked them were could you tell me like is it um, are the buttons raised or are they flat are they spread apart because they told me they were flat. They told me I, I wanted to know if they were spread apart. So if I could put like um, indicator dots, like locator dots on it. Anyway, I even asked them, um, you know, just to, to, to go through the layout of the buttons. They did that. Um, once I asked them to, um, I was looking for a lamp. They described that to me. They also helped me find a pair of shoes, believe it or not. One of the things um, that I have noticed, and I don't know if this is still the case, but they, they cannot put, um, they cannot, they can't um, check out can for you. Can they add right, they, items to your cart and then you yes, get the rest? Okay, they can, perfect. Most of the time they can add items to your cart. The, the, this one time they could not add an item to my cart um, was when I ordered a pair of shoes. And what they did, the reason why they couldn't add it to my cart was because it was by a third party seller. And so if it's not, if ah. it's a third party seller, they couldn't add it to my cart. But the guy, he came up with this idea. 
he said, I'll email you the link. And if you can use the app on your phone, I'm like, oh yeah, I use the app all the time. It's just, I, I use it for things that I don't need descriptions of. And so he emailed it to me. I tapped on the link and then it, it opened up the app and I put add to cart and it was, I was amazed. So, um, it sounds like, it sounds like they are truly passionate about really helping you out with just they what are. you need. And that's, mm-hmm. that is a wonderful thing to know because sometimes companies aren't. So give that right. a shot, see what they can do for you. Uh, see, I mean, they'll, they'll be happy to tell you, I'm sure what their limitations are if there are some, but it's definitely yes. an option that I was not aware of. And I think it will help a lot of people. Um, Um, I also wanted to, since I'm um, on the phone, I'm one of the people that um, had my hand raised. All right. Um, I wanted to answer the question about Peapod. Um, I have used Peapod for over, well, since 1997, actually. And I've had great experience with it. I'm in the Midwest, Chicago um, area. And they don't use a particular store. They used to use Jewel, but now they stock their own, own warehouse here. So I don't know if that's the same is all over the place, you know, but here um, in the Chicago, in Chicago, in the Chicago area, they stock their own warehouse. They also have a similar, um, like an annual delivery fee, you know, kind of similar to a prime membership. And I believe you can also do it six, uh, um, six months also, like you can do it every six months. Um, I've, had great experience with their produce. I've had a few experiences where I've gotten some not so great produce. One of them was on the hottest day of the year, literally Mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. So, so but they have an eight, they have an 800 number you can call. And what they did, what they did is they credited me. um, No problem. If the item that's damaged or missing is more than, I believe it's either 15 or $20, they can schedule a re-delivery at no cost. You, I mean, obviously, you'd still be charged for the item, right. but they can schedule a re-delivery at no cost, but they can, it has to be over a certain dollar amount. Otherwise, they would just credit you for the item. Yep, that makes sense. And so. Yeah, and the only thing I will say, um, one of the things I love about Peapod, and this is you have to be, um, you know, esta- like established with them for a while, is I you can shop from your past orders, and you can funnel it by past three months, past six months, or all time, but. An even easier option, I'm, I tend to be a creature of habit where I order 80% of um, my orders the same every week because I order once a week. And what I'll do is uh, I click on or tap on fill my cart with my last order and I just That's add and delete. It's great when you're doing like multiple like of one item, you know, right. like so, and yeah. And we're going to have so, to. Yeah, um, move on because we've got several okay. people with hands raised, but I, I apologize. I hate to cut you off because it's wonderful, wonderful information. Uh, so so don't take that as, no, no, go away. But um, we do have a number of people okay. uh, who have additional questions. So there you go. Thank you so much again. Another really great vote for Peapod. So if you have and that in your area, do check that out. Thanks for answering my question. Absolutely. All right, Nikki, your turn. Hi, Nikki. There you are, Nikki. Hello. Hi, I'm sorry. I couldn't find a good button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in San Diego, and we have several options here. Um, the the basima of the grocery delivery around here, besides Amazon, is the um, Safeway. In Southern California, it's the bond, and I think it's Northern California, it's a uh, safe way. And um, they have been doing the delivery, online delivery for, um, since like 2003 or four. I have been doing for a long time. Wow. And um, yeah, and they do have the text only website for people who use theater. And if you'd like, I'm not sure if they're doing it now or not, but uh, they did have 
uh, um, access about off my number where they would stop for you. Um, and, uh, and then they have that mobile app, separate app, just for the delivery. So if, with, depending on which you like, you can shop online and um, fill up your cart and then go to the mobile app later. And um, it's all synced as long as you sign up with the sign in with the same account. Right. And um, and around here, of course, the Prime Now is available. And um, like somebody else said, you can purchase from the past purchases, and um, you can build your shopping list like that. And um, I used to love um, Sprout Farmers Market, which is a oh. local store that was on Prime Prime Now. But as soon as they um, bought Whole Foods, now it's replaced by the Whole Foods. So I'm kind of sad about that. Yeah. And uh, one, thing, one thing about the mishap on the uh, online grocery, mm. one time I ordered a banana and I put one thing in one bunch of bananas. My yep. One showed up. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me too. <laughs> So th- that's actually a really good point. Um, be aware. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who's done that. Be aware uh-huh. As you're shopping, uh, some things are done by pound. Uh, it happens to be with zucchini as well. Um, so some <laughs> things are done by pound and some of them are done by the number of items. And sometimes it's actually the shopper who's looking for you they may interpret it wrong. So the app will give you kind of an option to say one or two or whatever. And the person who's shopping may just decide, oh, you only wanted one banana or one zucchini. And so um, there are for each of these uh, services a place to enter item instruction. And so if you're doing something where you're kind of concerned that maybe they might misinterpret this thing, um, you might want to put in the item instructions. Uh, hey, uh, by the way, I need like a bunch of bananas instead of just one, and that may help. Thank you so much, Nikki. <laughs> um, we have a few other people with hands raised. So it looks like, um, oh, more is the pity. We are going to have to have another event about food specifically dedicated to restaurant delivery because it doesn't look like we're going to get to that. Um, We have one person on the phone with their hand raised. But before we do that, I have an individual from chat requesting, if possible, if someone has that Amazon phone number for the Amazon disability line, could you repeat that once more, please? Yes, I could do that. It's 1-800-283-1678. 1-800-283-1678. And I wanted to add, I think I had my hand up. Anyway, I wanted to add that um, for Kroger, they you have an option whether or not to allow substitutions. And if you say that, yes, you will allow substitutions. For example, my husband likes the Diet Lemon Lime Big K. Well, Big K is the Kroger brand. So it's always the least expensive. But if they're out of that, then they'll replace it, say, with Diet 7-Up or Diet Sprite. And even though it's more expensive, they only charge the price for what we wanted, the big K price instead of the higher price. So that's a nice little perk, too. Absolutely. And that does actually seem to be a fairly common uh, practice, thankfully, is that if you <laughs> allow for substitutions and they don't have something, I've gotten a higher priced item because they were out of the other one. So that that can work out nicely in your favor. Peapod uh, does that too. Oh, good, fantastic. Apologize to apologize to break in, but uh, the accessibility... can you do the Amazon again? It's it's eight eight eight. Bring my Braille note up. Eight eight eight. Oh, 888 rather than... Oh, you know what? You are right. I do apologize. Yes, it is 888. What? 616... I'm sorry. 
Now I finally got it that time. Yes, and he is correct. It is 888. I apologize for that. So it's 888-283-1678. Correct. That will be great for a yarn and a lot of things. Thanks. Exactly. I have a quick uh, add-in here also, if you don't mind, Ricky. Um, Mark is uh, just ahead of you, and then we'll let you jump in. Go ahead, Mark. Okay. The Instacart disability number, I don't know if we actually had that. Um, if you were really, a lady in the beginning, said she had it. Oh, Instacart, yes, yes, go yes. ahead. I apologize. This, Ricky, this is Impish. I was the one that gave the Instacart number. Yep, I already, I already emailed it to you. Oh, good. So yeah, because I, be I didn't happy. want to, I didn't want my computer to be interfering <laughs> while you were doing the call. So yes. I sent you an email already with that phone number in it. If you check your inbox, that's great. So for uh, for the sake of uh, since we got about four minutes and we'll we'll be uh, nice and efficient here, Mark. If you would like to email me, e n g e r at hadley dot edu. And anyone else who needs that number as well as or in addition to any other resources that we've mentioned, please go ahead and email me and I will send those out. Um, Luis, we got time for your uh, uh, quick um, note and possibly one more person on the phone who has their hand raised. So let's Yeah, the only thing I was going to uh, say is I heard a demo on Instacart before and that reminded me from what somebody just said that if something is not available or if it's in a cheaper or more expensive price, the shopper who's still, uh, picking up the groceries for you will generally would text you or call you to um, ask you if you want a substitution or if you want the more expensive item or if you just want it bit, be removed from your yes. shopping cart. That's it. So uh, with Instacart, it will pop up as a notification in the app and with shipped, they actually send it as a text message. And so yeah, it, uh, either one of those, depending on what service you're using, the driver or rather the shopper can contact you in different ways to let you know, Hey, they're out of this. Do you want me to refund it or do you want me to uh, look for a substitution? All right. I have uh, time for one more quick question, and I hate to end this, but we're coming up on the hour. So who's got a quick one? This is yeah, Teresa hey. from Portland. Go ahead, Portland. <laughs> okay. Um, it's about Instacart. If you want to shop at Costco or Sam's Club, do you have to have a um, card number, or will they just do it for you? Oh, great question. Uh, so you don't actually need a membership to those kind of bulk clubs like uh, Sam's or Costco or BJ's. You can, however, enter, uh, for example, if you have a Food Lion MVP card or a Harris Teeter Vic card, you can enter those into the app to kind of track your purchases and do whatever Vic uh, or um, MVP rewards and the like. That they do. But for the bulk stores like that, you thankfully do not need a um, a membership to those things. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. So guys, I want to thank you uh, for joining us. I also uh, want to mention that uh, it looks like the early birds get the worm because uh, we, we, for this first meeting had it capped at 100 participants and uh we exceeded that, so there were some people who didn't have the opportunity to come have fun with us tonight, which is kind of sad, but good for you guys that you got here early. So, again, I want to thank you all for joining us for the first of many Tech It Out meetings from Hadley. Ask you to stay tuned to uh, social media, Hadley Institute on Facebook and Twitter. Um, so keep up with that to see what's coming next from us. Many of you are probably also uh, subscribed to the mailing list, so you'll get announcements that way as well. And uh, stay tuned to see what we do next. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. Great job, Ricky. Thank you.